Welcome back to the Morning Blend. As you prepare your high school graduate for college, there's a lot to consider. Attorney Al Spiegel is a partner at the McClario firm, and he joins us now with a quiz to test our knowledge about all this good stuff. Good morning to you. Good morning, Molly. How are you? I'm doing great. I have sent two to college, one more to go. There are so many things that we have to think about. Yeah, there really are. It's a, it's a time when a lot of things are changing. Really, the legal status of your child is changing, your relationship is changing, and the ge geography is often changing. So we got to make some decisions, and those decisions have consequences. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, I want to do this quiz. Um, you, you can test me, see what I know. Do you want to read the questions, and then I'll answer true or false? Sure, yeah, and it's going to be a statement, and you tell me whether it's true or false. Okay. All right. Statement number one, it's a good idea to purchase real property or real estate for your child to live in at college. You know what? I'm going to say some parents are going to say true because they're going to want an affordable, decent place for their kids to live, especially once they're out of dorms. Yep. Uh, some parents are going to say that, but it's usually not a good idea. Um, false. What you're what you're setting yourself up for is one of two things. Either you're gonna become a landlord for your child and their friends who you don't know very well and probably shouldn't trust. Or number two, even worse, <laughs> you're gonna put uh, some real estate, you're gonna buy some real estate and put it in your child's name, which is setting up for all sorts of problems. If they have financial issues, it could goof up their financial aid. I mean, there are all sorts of potential issues that are gonna come from this. Are there, po are there situations where it might work and might be a good thing? Yeah, it might be, but there are a lot of pitfalls, and it's a decision that should be made very, very carefully, especially with the high real estate prices right now. Very sparingly, it sounds true. So not a great idea to buy them real estate. Okay, what's question number two? All right, if your college student is in need of emergency medical care, you can make those decisions for them. I'm going to say false because they're, they're of an age where probably parents think that they can, but, but we can't. You are correct. It is false. Not only can you not make those decisions, you don't even have the ability to access information about their health care. I just had a, a woman in my office whose son was in France and he got sick and she called her. He called her and said, Mom, I'm going to the hospital. I'm not feeling good. She said, call me later. Well, two days later, she was frantic trying to get a hold of someone from the school and they told her, we're sorry, we can't release any medical information to you. Mm. So she couldn't figure out what was going on until her son who had been playing video games the whole time, remembered that he was supposed to call his mom three days later and called her and she yelled at him for a little while and it was okay. But it was a very tense couple of days for my poor client because she didn't have the ability to get that information. Yeah, are there some legal things that we can do as parents to give us the ability to make decisions like that? Yeah, there's really three documents we do. The first one is a financial power of attorney so that you can kind of manage financial business type decisions. Now, what we're talking about here is on the medical side. So you're going to want to do a health care power of attorney that would they would sign it to allow you or your spouse or whoever to make medical decisions. And then the third document would be a HIPAA release, a document that says these people have the right to view my medical records or discuss my situation with my doctor should something happen to me. So you're going to want to get all three of those done for a uh, for a uh, uh, college student. Is it actually more affordable to to get that type of legal help for a college student than we might think? Oh yeah, I mean, I I, I know at our office I have a package for college students. It's like $150 to get all these documents done. Wow. Now there are people who want more more fancy stuff, and there you know an, another lawyer might be a little little more than that, but it's not a major undertaking to get them done. Um, certainly, people sometimes decide they're going to do them on their own. And I always tell people, if you like paying lawyers, do your own legal documents, because that can cause a lot more expensive problems than just paying them someone to do right in the first place. Oh, for sure. That, that is cheap peace of mind, I would say. Okay, do you have one more question for me? Yep, last one. Uh, college students are allowed to act as executors or trustees on their parents' wills or trusts. Now, see, normally I would think true because I would think that they're at an age where legally they could do that, but I bet you're gonna say false, that they cannot. Uh, I psyched you out. It is true. Oh, They're it adults, is. So. Now, does it mean that they should? Maybe not. <laughs> and we don't know what's going on in their situation. And I always tell people, even if your kid, when they're with you, is a reasonable, rational, wise person, they might have some influences in their life or some stresses that are going to make that not a good thing for them. And also, realistically, it should something happen to you, are they going to have the capacity emotionally to handle all that? 
you have to decide that. But when they're adults, they're allowed to do it. So you need to decide whether that's a position you want to put them in or you want to wait till they're a little bit older to allow them to do. I, I think that's s such great information. I don't have those legal documents in place for my two college students and I have another one headed that way in the fall. So I'm so glad that we did this segment with you. And I want to mention that you have a great series on YouTube that people can check out the, your legal tips for graduates, which is wonderful. People can go to YouTube. Um, we're going to provide that um, link on our website, but people People can go there and take advantage of this free series and really learn a lot more about the, the paperwork and the things you should have in order for your college student. Al, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been great talking to you, Molly. Have a great day. Great talking to you, too, and very informative. I want to make sure that people know that they should not forget to check out your Legal Tips for Graduates. It's a video series that Al has on YouTube. We're going to post a link on our website so that you can check that out. Now, for a free consultation, you can call their office. You can also go online. The phone number is 262-251-4210, or their website is mcclario.com.